Hello Medical Coders, today's video we are going to see about the chapter specific guidelines in ICD-10 CM guidelines. I have already covered chapter 8 and also over the hypertension section of the chapter 9. Because this chapter 9 diseases of the circulatory system is really big, so we have split it into part 1 and part 2. So in today's video we will be looking into chapter 9 diseases of circulatory system I00 to I99. Under that, we will be covering atherosclerotic coronary artery disease and angina, intraoperative and post-procedural cerebrovascular accident, acute myocardial infarction, which is AMI, in this part 2 of Chapter Specific Guidelines, Chapter 9. Let's get started. This is Surya John Singh, your medical coding guide. Hello, medical coders. I have already released an ICD chapter 1 to 8 chapter specific guidelines if you want to see those videos i'll put the link in the description box below and also i have started the chapter specific guideline chapter 9 disease of the circulatory system part 1 where i've explained about the hypertension section so the remaining section we'll be covering in this video part 2 of icd 10 cm guideline chapter specific guideline chapter 9 disease of circulatory system series i00 to i99 if you are new to this channel, I am Surya Johnson. This video is completely for medical coders, experienced medical coders and fresher medical coders and people who wanted to choose a new career in medical coding. My channel is related to medical coding. So in this channel, I will be discussing all the guidelines, all the newly released updates and about the examination under AAPC and all the study tips, tricks and everything under the medical coding will be covered in my channel. If you don't want to miss any of these videos, please subscribe and hit the notification bell icon so you'll not miss any of my coding or later updates, videos and tips and tricks. So under chapter 9, the P section, atherosclerotic coronary artery disease and angina. So before going into the diagnosis, we will first understand what is atherosclerotic coronary artery disease and angina. So angina means it is a type of chest pain that is caused by reduced blood flow to the heart. So the blood flow to the heart has been reduced because of some uh, conditions like blockages, clot formations and everything. So this is a type of chest pain that is caused by reduced blood flow to the heart. So when you come into atherosclerotic coronary artery disease, this is a disease condition. It is caused by plague buildup in the wall of the arteries that supply blood to the heart. So this is uh, a cholesterol deposits otherwise known as plague these are built up in the arteries and this is a disease condition if this is causing a pain because of the reduced flow to the heart then it is called as angina so this section b atherosclerotic coronary artery disease and angina what it is saying so icd 10 cm has combination codes for atherosclerotic heart disease with angina pectoris so there is a combination code when the patient is having a blockage and the patient is having a type of chest pain because of the low flow, reduced flow of blood to the heart. Both the condition and the pain is at the same time. There is a combination code to code this atherosclerotic heart disease with angina pectoris. So the subcategories for these codes are I25.11, which is atherosclerotic heart disease of native coronary arteries with angina pectoris. There is I25.7, which is atherosclerosis of coronary artery bypass graft and coronary artery of transplanted heart with angina pectoris. So there are two subcategories here. The one is the I25.11, which is the condition has happening in the patient's original coronary artery, that is from the birth, there is arteries, right? So that native coronary artery is getting affected. There's, there is a blockage or plaque formation, which resulted in angina, that is the pain. In that case, I25.11. In certain cases, the patient has already had some previous severe conditions in the heart which resulted in a bypass graft or a transplant heart. Heart transplant has been done for that patient. Later, that bypass graft or that transplanted heart, in that transplanted heart, the coronary artery has this block and it resulted in the angina pectoris, that is the pain. In this scenario, you will be coding I25.7. This is not the native coronary artery, that is the patient's original coronary artery. This is the coronary artery given to the patient by a bypass graft or from a transplanted heart. So these two codes are categorized under the atherosclerotic coronary artery disease and angina section. When using one of these combination codes, 
it is not necessary to use an additional code for angina pectoris why as a general coding guideline when there is a combination code exist in this case there is already a combination code i25.11 or i25.7 so in this case there is a combination code that explains patient has a coronary artery disease atherosclerotic coronary artery disease and the patient which resulted into angina so you don't have to add another separate code to identify the patient is having angina pectoris because this combination code itself explains the patient is also having an angina pectoris a causal relationship can be assumed in a patient with both atherosclerosis and angina pectoris unless the documentation indicates the angina is due to something other than atherosclerosis so if the patient documentation doesn't document that this angina is because of this atherosclerotic coronary artery disease even if it doesn't document or doesn't uh, doesn't document the causal relationship among these two conditions you can directly quote the combination code unless if the document specifically states this angina is due to some other condition and not this atherosclerosis then if they have specifically documented there is no relationship between these two then you'll be coding two different codes unless there is no specific documentation about this relationship you can directly choose the combination codes so the patient having the coronary artery disease if the patient is admitted due to an acute myocardial infarction that is ami then the ami should be sequenced before the coronary artery disease because this is also the general coding guidelines if you have not watched my general coding guideline video i'll put the link in the description box below because we should first be clear in uh, general coding guidelines before the chapter specific coding guidelines because without general coding guidelines we will not know or will not understand what the chapter specific coding guidelines is talking about so this talks about if the patient is admitted due to an acute myocardial infarction or and the patient is already having a coronary artery disease in the scenario you'll be coding the ami first because that is the reason for admission got my point right so this c point which is the intraoperative and post procedural cerebral vascular accident this talks about the cva that is happening cva means cerebral vascular accident that is happening during an operative procedure or after an operation has been performed on the patient so there are cases or instances where there might be a cerebral vascular accident that happens during an intraoperative procedure there is a complication that leads to cerebral vascular accident or sometimes the procedure will be completed the surgery will be completed after that because of this procedure there is a complication which leads to a cerebral vascular accident so in this scenario we should consider some points the first point is the medical record documentation should clearly state that this cva is because of this surgery or this procedure performed or the surgery that is ongoing so there should be a clear documentation whether this is intraoperative that is during the surgery or post procedure that is after completing the surgery this should be documented clearly the second one what we should check is whether this is an infarction or hemorrhage so what is infarction so an infarction is a tissue death there is a necrosis of a tissue the tissue died because of the inadequate blood supply to the area during this procedure or after the procedure the tissue died because the blood supply that is going to the tissue has been affected so there is no proper blood supply or inadequate blood supply to that affected area this is called as infarction so what is hemorrhage hemorrhage is a blood leakage or an escape of blood from the ruptured blood vessel so there are blood vessels right there is a minute rupture rupture means breaking breaking of the blood vessel very minute or very serious breakage of the blood vessel which resulted in escape of the blood from that blood vessel so this is the differentiation between hemorrhage and infarction the document should support whether it is an intraoperative during the procedure or post procedural cerebral vascular accident and then it should document clearly whether this is an infarction or a hemorrhage and if this hemorrhage is a cerebral hemorrhage there are types of codes that depends on the procedure performed what kind of procedure is performed that resulted in the cerebral hemorrhage so this is what about the intraoperative and post procedural cerebral vascular accident so the d point here is sequelae of cerebral vascular disease so what is a sequelae so a sequelae means it is a condition which is a consequence of a previous disease or injury there is some disease or an injury that has happened previously 
now after few days few months few years there will be a condition generating because of that previous injury or previous disease that has happened to the patient so this is a sequelae of cerebrovascular disease so we will see what are the sequelae of cerebrovascular disease and how to cope category of sequelae of cerebrovascular disease falls under i69 so category i69 is used to indicate conditions classifiable to categories i60 to i67 so what and all conditions diagnosis that are fo- that are falling under i60 to i61 series these conditions should have been coded with the sequelae code i69 codes so any codes that are not say any conditions that does not fall with i60 to i67 series we should not consider any sequelae with i69 code so this is clear to you so what and all condition classifiable under i60 to i67 categories will be eligible to be coded for sequelae which falls in i69 category so these late effects that is the sequelae include neurologic deficits that persist after initial onset of condition classifiable in the categories so the sequelae can happen either onset of that condition that is the patient has one condition and then the sequelae happens during the onset or at any time from the onset of the condition so any time a condition is arising and that is linked with this i60 to i67 that category conditions then we will be coding i69 so codes from category i69 value of cerebrovascular disease that specify hemiplegia hemiparesis and monoplegia identify whether the dominant or non dominant side is affected one side of the body or one limb of the body has been affected in that case we should consider the dominant or non dominant side that is affected we should first understand what is dominant and non dominant the normal patient left side is affected we will consider the left side as non dominant side if the patient right side is affected so we will be considering the right side as the dominant side so there are patients who are ambidextrous patients ambidextrous means they can use both the side of the body effectively same effort the same capability of the right side is equal to the same effort and capability of the left side of the patient so this patient has the capacity of both the sides working with the same vigor and strength in this patient is called ambidextrous patient so for those patients which side is affected the dominant side if the left side is affected then left side will be the dominant side for ambidextrous patient the so right side is affected the right side will be the dominant for this ambidextrous patient so only for ambidextrous patient it differs otherwise as per the universal guideline right side is dominant left side is non dominant so the second point here is codes from category i69 with codes from i60 to i67 so the patient has a current cerebrovascular disease and deficit from an old cerebrovascular disease for example the patient is also having a current cva cerebrovascular disease right now and the patient had an old cerebrovascular disease previously and because of that there is a sequelae then you will be coding previous old cerebrovascular disease and you'll code the sequelae i69 so the third point under the sequelae is codes from category i69 and personal history of transient ischemic attack tia and cerebral infarction c86.73 so codes from this category i69 should not be assigned if the patient does not have a neurological deficit because this patient diagnosis c86.73 states that the patient is not having a neurological deficit right now it is a personal history that is the patient had a previous history of this tia and cerebrovascular infarction and now right now the patient does not have the condition because if the patient is having the condition you will not give personal history you will be coding it as current condition diagnosis but if there is a personal history and the patient right now does not have that condition or sequelae you will not be coding i69 So the E point here is acute myocardial infarction (AMI). So what is acute myocardial infarction? What is myocardium first? Myocardium means the muscular tissue of the heart. Myo means muscle, cardio means heart. So the muscle of the heart. Myocardial infarction means a myocardial necrosis. Necrosis means death of the tissue. If you want to understand all these conditions, these medical terminologies. I highly recommend you to go and watch my medical terminology video where I have given you the breakdown and how to understand and study because we are not doctors. In this scenario how to remember all these condition how to understand what does that mean? Most of the medical terminology if you understand to break down the medical terminologies 
and understand the meaning of each breakdown will be very much helpful for you not only in the exam in the long run even in your workplace you don't have to always go google or ask your seniors or ask the help of others for small conditions or the names or whatever it is if you know how to study the medical terminologies that would be helpful for you in the long run and that differentiates you from other coders so you want to be a special coder try to learn medical terminologies so if you are confused how to learn i have already posted a bunch of video on how to learn the medical terminologies the prefix suffix root words how to learn how to understand and each system wise each organ system wise i have released a video previously i put those links also in the description box below so you can watch them so let's get back to this acute myocardial infarction so what is myocardium as i said let's break down myo means muscle cardio means heart so the muscle of the heart heart muscle necrosis means death of that tissue so death of the heart tissue which results from acute obstruction of a coronary artery so there is an obstruction obstruction means a blockage in the coronary artery this leads to ceasing of the blood supply that is stopping the blood supply to a particular heart tissue which resulted in that heart tissue to die necrosis so this is called as acute myocardial infarction under that we have first one type 1 st elevation myocardial infarction which is called as stemi and non st elevation myocardial infarction which is called as n stemi or non stemi so what is the difference between stemi and n stemi so stemi means it is a heart attack with a completely blocked coronary artery so the coronary artery is completely blocked and it is very severe so what is non stemi non stemi is also a myocardial infarction it's a type of heart attack only but it is less severe and it causes less damage to the heart compared to stemi so type 1 st elevation myocardial infarction stemi and non st elevation myocardial infarction n stemi or non stemi the so, subcategories i21.0 i21.2 i21.3 these are used for one uh, type 1 st elevation myocardial infarction stemi so for the non st elevation non stemi or n stemi we will be coding i21.4 so only one code because for uh, stemi or type 1 we are identifying the site that's why there are three codes for non stemi it's direct and also the non st elevation myocardial infarction type 1 code i21.4 you will be coding also for non transmural myocardial infarction as well so if a type 1 n stemi evolves to stemi so for example the patient now has a non uh, st elevation myocardial infarction that is the n stemi that is very less severe then later the patient condition worsens and it evolves to stemi which is a very severe condition where the entire coronary artery is being blocked so in this scenario you will be going for the stemi code because it is no more n stemi it has become it has evolved into the next stage which is the stemi stage so if a type 1 stemi converts to non stemi due to thrombolytic therapy it is still code as stemi so first scenario we saw if the type 1 n stemi evolves to stemi we will code the severe one stemi vice versa what will happen if the one type 1 stemi is convert to n stemi because they did some therapy for example thrombolytic thrombolytic therapy after doing a therapy the severity reduces and it becomes an n stemi even in this scenario you will be coding it as stemi the patient will be considered severe only and all we can code the myocardial infarction patient is having a myocardial infarction from then the patient has been transferred to an acute setting or post acute setting the treatment is ongoing now it is 4 weeks already from the onset of myocardial infarction now the patient uh, the week is already 4 weeks so up to 4 weeks you can code from the category i21 series only you can continue to code up to 4 weeks so after 4 weeks so for the encounters after the 4 week of time frame and the patient is still receiving care related to that myocardial infarction the same myocardial infarction the patient is getting treatment is getting all the related treatment after 4 week of time frame so like fifth week we can say for example so on the fifth week the patient has been treated for the myocardial infarction that time we'll be coding in that scenario the after care code appropriate after care code should be assigned for myocardial infarction you will not be coding again from the i21 so so for the old or healed myocardial infarction for say an example the patient 
uh, had a myocardial infarction like a few months back or few years back it becomes an old myocardial infarction or the patient current myocardial infarction say like fifth week or sixth week it has been healed com- it has been healed completely so there is no more further care required for the old case and for the acute case also more than four week time there is no more care treatment needed because it has healed completely the patient is okay again back to normal completely in this scenario you will be coding i25.2 which is old myocardial infarction so next second point under the myocardial infarction unspecified acute myocardial infarction so we'll be coding code i21.9 so code i21.9 acute myocardial infarction unspecified will be the default code if the acute uh, myocardial infarction or the type has not been specified so if only type 1 stemi or transmural mi without the site is documented then you can code i21.3 st uh, elevation stemi myocardial infarction of unspecified site so in general nothing is mentioned only acute myocardial infarction is specified then you will be going with i21.9 so the third point here is ami documented as as non transmural or sub endocardial but site provided so what is non transmural or sub endocardial so if you know the answer or you don't know the answer go to the google search it and put it in the comment section below what is non transmural i want the exact definition or the meaning of that medical terminology non transmural and also sub endocardial so if an ami is documented as non transmural or sub endocardial but the site is provided it is still coded as the sub endocardial ami fourth point under acute myocardial infarction is subsequent acute myocardial infarction so a code from category i22 you will be coding for subsequent st elevation stemi and non stemi myocardial infarction it is to be used when a patient who has suffered the type 1 or unspecified ami has a new ami within the four week of time frame from the initial ami so the patient is already having an acute myocardial infarction and is undergoing a treatment or the treatment has stopped whatever it is and within that four week time frame another acute myocardial infarction another heart attack is occurring so in this scenario you will be coding i22 so a code from category i22 must be used in conjunction with the code from a category i21 because to denote the patient had an acute mi and within the four week time frame the patient is again having a subsequent subsequent means after immediate after initial mi to denote that one we should be coding both the codes so i21 and i22 so the sequencing depends on the circumstances of the encounter do not assign code i22 for subsequent mi other than type 1 or unspecified subsequent type 2 acute myocardial infarction will be assigning only code i21.a1 so for subsequent type 4 or type 5 assign only code i21.a9 subsequent ami after the type 1 or unspecified ami should be coded with i22 just remember that one so if subsequent mi of one type occurs within 4 weeks of a myocardial infarction of a different type assign the appropriate code from the category i21 to identify each type different type of mi is occurring in the subsequent period apart from the primary mi the first acute myocardial infarction is a different type then the subsequent within that 4 weeks of time frame right the subsequent myocardial infarction is totally a different type in that scenario you'll be coding i21 identifying each type not the i22 so do not assign code from i22 codes from category i22 should be only assigned if both the initial and subsequent myocardial infarctions are type 1 or unspecified so the fifth and the last point under acute myocardial infarction is other types of myocardial infarction so the icd 10 cm provides codes for different types of myocardial infarction so the type 1 myocardial infarction is i21.0 to i21.4 type 2 myocardial infarction which is myocardial infarction due to demand ischemia or secondary to ischemic imbalance so what is ischemia so ischemia means it's a condition in which the blood flow along with the oxygen so we all know blood carries oxygen so when there is a restriction in the blood flow it is reduced then the oxygen level is also restricted so whenever there is a restriction of blood flow and oxygen a part of the body called as ischemia 
so if this oxygen supply is less or restricted for the heart we call that as cardiac ischemia now let's get into the guidelines so type 2 myocardial infarction myocardial infarction due to demand ischemia secondary to ischemic imbalance we will be coding i21.a1 which is myocardial infarction type 2 with the underlying cause code first we will be coding the underlying condition first and then i21.a1 so do not assign code i24.8 other forms of acute ischemic heart disease for the demand ischemia so for the demand ischemia or ischemic imbalance we will be coding i21.a1 only and you will not be coding i24.8 which is the other forms of acute ischemic heart disease if a type 2 ami is described as n stemi or stemi so we already saw about the type 1 stemi and stemi code so if the type 2 ami is described as n stemi or stemi only assign code i21.a1 in the scenario so codes i21.0 to i21.4 should only be assigned for was the answer yes type 1 ami so what about the other types acute myocardial infarction type 3 4a 4b 4c and 5 will be assigning code i21.89 other myocardial infarction type always look into the code also code first notes under the icd 10 cm whenever you find code also it means you should code something also with that whenever you find code first it means you should code first what and all is listed on that series you should code first those diagnoses followed by whatever diagnosis on the above so always pay attention to all the foot notes while billing the icd 10 cm guidelines so the sixth point here is myocardial infarction with coronary microvascular dysfunction this point is new for 2024 so myocardial infarction with coronary microvascular dysfunction what is coronary microvascular first we'll know about that so so far we've been seeing about the artery blockage heart attack and everything so even there are small blood vessels in the heart these are called as coronary microvasculature these small blood vessels what they do they carry most of the blood flow to the heart muscles they deliver oxygen to the heart so they supply from the major arteries these blood vessels known as coronary microvasculature they supply blood and they supply oxygen to the heart muscle itself sometimes what happens these small blood vessels called as microvasculature these become unhealthy either their lining becomes very narrowed or they get dilated widened because of plaque build ups so the plaque build ups can be in the major coronary arteries the large coronary arteries there can be sometimes plaque there in the coronary arteries and because of that the supply to this microvasculature reduces but some other times the major coronary arteries are healthy they, there is no plaque build up in the larger coronary arteries and this microvasculature the small blood vessels itself have damage they have some issues they have some narrowing or some widening the uh, small vessels because of some exercise or like major stress like that this might cause this coronary microvascular dysfunction this guideline says The CMD coronary microvascular dysfunction is a condition that impacts the microvasculature by restricting microvascular flow and increasing microvascular resistance. For this condition, we will be coding I21 point B, which is myocardial infarction with coronary microvascular dysfunction. As I've already told in the description of myocardial infarction with coronary microvascular dysfunction. If the coronary arteries are obstructed, leading to microvascular disease, you will be coding I21 point B. Sometimes there is no obstruction in the coronary artery but still the microvascular dysfunction is there you will be still coding I21 point B so whatever the case is if there is a mention of microvascular dysfunction you will be directly coding I21 point B so that is what is explained in the second part of that sixth point so you will be assigning I21 point B when there is a myocardial infarction with coronary microvascular disease or micro myocardial infarction with coronary microvascular dysfunction and also myocardial infarction with non obstructive coronary arteries that is minoca with microvascular disease so if there is a dysfunction you'll be coding this code directly no questions asked so that is all about the icd 10 cm chapter specific guideline 9 chapter this is of the circulatory system i hope this video was useful to the medical coders out there especially fresh medical coders who are going for the examination and this guideline and all the other guidelines are not only important for the freshers 
or for the people who are going for the exam. It's always important for all the medical scholars out there who are experienced in whatever level you are. We all should be well versed in medical coding guidelines and we should always keep us updated. If you are having any doubts and understanding any of the points that I have discussed today, if you have any other doubts related to medical coding guidelines, please ask me in the comment section below or email me. I will try to answer all your queries at the earliest maximum. So if you found this video to be useful, please hit like so I will know that it was useful to you and share with your medical coding friend. If you are new to this channel, if you are not subscribed, Please subscribe and hit the notification bell icon so you will not miss any of my medical coding related video. You can always follow me on my Instagram page and my Facebook page. See you in the next guideline video. This is Surya Johnson, your medical coding guide.